Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an optical flare transition in DaVinci Resolve. I'll walk you through exactly how to do it step by step. On top of that, you can do this entirely for free using the free version of Resolve. No plugins needed. But if you do have the optical flare plugin, I'll show you how to do it with that as well. Lastly, this video was inspired by Media Tiff on YouTube. I'll link his channel below. And with that being said, let's get started. All right, so now we're going to make our optical flares. If you don't have the optical flare plugin, just go down in the description and you find a couple free flares. But if you do have the plugin, just follow along and then you can skip to this part the video all right so first thing you want to do is get an adjustment layer make sure it goes over your whole clip like that right click on the adjustment layer and then open infusion all right once you're in your fusion panel you want to hit shift space and add the optical flare node right there once that's done go here into your tools go on glow and then add sun right there once you're here grab this and drag it over the eye so basically you just want it over the eye like this and then you can just make it slightly small and then you're gonna add the star as well and then just bring this like way down yeah like that then you're gonna choose your color down here i'll use red with that and then i'll do the same thing for this one and then i'll make it red all right once that's done you have something that looks like that then i'm going to go to my streaks and i'm going to click anamorphic scale right here then we're going to have this and i'm going to decrease or increase the hardness depending on what i want but i want it to be like slightly there yeah i think something like this looks fine then i'm going to change the color to red as well just like that but other multiple options that you can use like sport you can even use caustics if you want and some hoops right here some hoops which basically just brings these hoop lines down here all right now i'm going to go to the beginning here to optic flare and then just make this red and then you should have something that looks like this once that's done you're going to click on your adjustment layer right here hit c or if you want right click and hit new compound clip and just name it red flare hit save and it's going to be saved up here in your media pool you can then delete this then grab another adjustment layer in your timeline and drag it all the way over your clip then go back into the fusion panel and in the fusion panel you're going to go up to the media pool and grab the red flare as usual and then from here what we're going to do is click on our media in and then hit shift space and type in tracker then we're going to add it into our node tree and then you're going to grab this and perfectly align it with the eye right there so to navigate this panel here you want to use control plus scroll to zoom in and then middle mouse button to move around like this so you can use those two together to help you move in nicely just like that you can bring your media pool out and then you want to go to your starting frame right here make sure it's dead center and then you want to track it's not the best track as you can clearly see it really isn't like the best track so yeah but if you use this method grab the flare up here connect it to your tracker like that and then go up to your tracker here then go to operation and then select match move and then make sure the apply mode is set to screen and then after that you're going to see that it follows the uh, character basically he basically follows the character but the track is not perfect so it looks really really bad so i'm gonna show you how to do it without using the tracker but if the tracker works go ahead and use it so we're going to delete the tracker then we're going to get our media in red flare connect it right there we're going to have a merge node and in our apply mode again i'm going to make sure it's screen and then i'm just gonna reduce the size of our flare and then i'm going to zoom in here and i'll just match it with this right here and i'll go to our starting frame then we're going to start putting in our keyframes so that it completely lines up on every movement so the first frame i think is fine then we're going to go to the second one just zoom in and see and just place it as dead center as we possibly can and i'll do this for every single frame all right once that's done you're gonna have something that looks like this i feel like that's a fairly good track right there then one thing you're going to notice is that there's a red square around the eye so to break that hard edge of the square you're going to get an ellipse mask right here while clicking on the media two in then just make it like dead center right there and then just crank the soap edge all the way up and it's just gonna like magically disappear and you're not gonna see it anymore yeah i think that that looks fine now i'm going to do the same thing for the next eye just select this tool and then hit ctrl c click in an empty space ctrl v and then you can bring this down here and it's going to add another merge node right there and then just make sure i set the apply mode to screen and then you can just add your keyframes accordingly another thing is make sure the size of the flares are the same so go here on the previous one hit ctrl c go to the next one right there and hit ctrl v to paste it on then you're just gonna add your keyframes as usual All right, once that's done, you're going to have something that looks like this. Really cool. I feel like it looks sick. But we're going to make the flares more pronounced by adding a brightness and contrast node on each. So go up here, grab a brightness and contrast node, hold shift, add it, hold shift, and then let go of the mouse clip while still holding shift. Then we're just going to take the gain up quite a bit there. So it's like more pronounced by that much. All right, so after that, we're then going to go into this brightness and contrast node, hit control C, click in an open space, paste it, and then bring this up like this. 
hold shift, then look over the mouse button, and then it's going to be pasted onto this. And I feel like the glow looks way more pronounced, like way, way more pronounced. I feel like that looks sick. Next, we're going to just copy this whole thing right here, this whole note tree right here. And then we're going to go into our timeline, grab another adjustment layer, put it over our second clip like this, and then go into the fusion panel. And in fusion, we're just going to click in the empty space to make sure no node is selected. And then we're going to hit Control V to paste everything on then from there we're just going to copy the size once more and then delete this merge node bring in a merge node again and then just paste on the size Control v and then make this screen then you can track accordingly right so when everything's done you should have something that looks like that i feel like it looks fire so yeah now from there we're going to go up to playback because then we're doing a lot of pc intensive stuff go to playback timeline resolution set it to quarter go back to timeline and then set the render cache to smart right there then we're going to grab our first adjustment layer right here hold out and then drag it out right there then you're going to go up here and then just click all and then we are going to go to like the last couple of frames so we're going to make this a compound clip just name it reference if you want and then click create and then from there you're going to go to the last couple of frames right click on it and then go to change clip speed then from here you're going to add a freeze frame then you're going to delete the rest of everything right there and then you're going to extend this just like that then you're going to hit compound clip again and then set this as reference v2 this time when that's done you can delete it and then you can go back click all once more and then now we're going to get another adjustment layer put it over the second clip this time drag it disable this other clip so the pc runs smoothly then go into the fusion panel of the other layer then from here go into the media pool and then grab reference v2 right there then you can close that and then you're going to put that right there what we're basically doing is just using this as reference so you want to click in the empty space shift space and then add a b spline right there I got this tapered line process from Peach. I'll link his video down below. All right, once you've added your B-spline, you then want to make a path. So we're going to go to our third eye right here and make a really cool path. I'll make it like a bit exaggerated. Then I'll go on our media out and then drag it to the viewer and I'll put it directly over the eye that way. Now go to like the fourth frame right here and just drag it right there. I think that looks fine. Then from there, we're going to go into our spline again and then zoom in a bit and we can just make the playback like full quality so we can see the line nicely. Then we're going to antique solid right here and increase the border width to whatever thickness we want. I think that'll be fine for me right there. Then we're going to go up to settings up here and in settings, we're going to take motion blur and in motion blur, we're going to make this 20. Then we're going to make the shadow angle 1400 then we're going to make the center bias one right there then we're going to make the sample rate 2.5 then i'm going to go up to my controls right here then from here i'm going to play with my position so i'm going to go to like the fourth frame right here and then take the position up just like that then go to the last frame bring it back up and then go like dead center almost and then just reduce the length a bit so i reduce the length maybe like by that much and then we're going to have something that moves like that right there then from there we're going to go into our node space again and then from here we're going to add a bitmap we're going to add it and then here on your base plank you want to drag this right here hold alt and then let go of your mouse button without letting go of alt and then click on image then you have something like this then drag it to your viewer right there then in here in our bitmap we're going to set this to 0.25 after that, we're going to make sure our edge, soft edge, is set to like that, this much almost, maybe like a bit higher. Yeah, maybe something like this looks good. Then from there, we're going to add another bit mat, so shift space, add it like that. And then same thing, hold out, let go of your mouse button, image, and then bring it up like that. Then from here, we're going to bring the high point down like that. Now it's going to look like this. So to make it look better, we're going to add an erode dilate node. So click in the empty space, hit shift space, road dilate. I did same thing, hold out, let go of your mouse button and then put it on input and then put it on your viewer. Here, you're going to set the filter to circle and then you're going to reduce the amount drastically. And then you're going to go up here and then just change the last value to three like that. And then you can increase it accordingly. Maybe something like this is fine. Then from there, we're going to grab a background node from up here. And then we're going to connect it like that to our background and then we're going to view it in our viewer like that then from there you can add a glow i personally love using the scape glow i feel like it's like the best glow but you can use a soft glow that's already in davinci resolve i'll link some of scape's free stuff in the description and from there we're going to connect the background like that and then in our background node we're going to make sure it's set to solid color you can make it gradient if you want then i'll go to color and set it to red like that then i'll go on my glow this way and then i'll just increase it to whatever i like i think that looks fine then from there we're going to add another background node and then connect it that way and then we're going to add another erode dilate node and then here we're just going to make it circle right there then we're going to copy and paste this node so Control c Control v and then just connect the two that way and then you're going to have something that's like really overwhelmingly like bright so I'll just take the strength down a bit more and then you can grab the erode dilate connect it now i'm just going to organize the node tree okay then from there you're going to copy the whole thing from here and just hit 
Control C. Right there. Once it's done, you want to select everything again and hit Control G so that everything is nicely organized. Then grab the end of the group node and then attach it to your media in one and then you have something like that and then you should have a path movement that goes like that i feel like that's fine we'll adjust the graphs later now we're going to remake the other one but for the other eye all right so once that's done you're gonna do the same thing but with the other line for the other eye using the reference again this is for the second eye and this is for and this group here is for the one we did previously so yeah again select everything together like that Control g then merge it to your notary just like this then you're gonna have something that looks like that i'm just gonna play with the graphs a bit so it's a bit faster but yeah all right so once you're in your spline panel there's going to be groups here so you're going to click on the groups and then choose which graph you want so these are the graphs i went for you don't need this one right here you only need the the position which is why we keyframed then on group two again i use the same exact graph again you don't need the po polyline right here you only need position then you're gonna have something that looks like that i feel like it's fast enough and it covers a short amount of frames so yeah that's fine all right once everything is done you're gonna have path lines that look like that it's going to be a bit glitchy because this is a really heavy effect but yeah all right so now we're going to make this effect look a little bit more interesting than it already is so we're going to do this go into your media pool get an adjustment layer like that put it over your clip extend it and then just get this one hold out and then just drag it here and then just remove uh, the whole thing of it behind then enter your adjustment layer then from here we're going to hit shift space and type in turbulence right there turbulent noise we can grab this fuse link in the description it's completely free and then here in our turbulent noise we're then going to go to our color and then make this black like that and then we're going to go into our controls once more and then just turn the contrast up quite a bit so it's like more prominent there we go because we're going to play with the brightness later on and from there we can choose which type of turbulent noise you want I'll, i usually go for turbulent or fire but i think i'll just use fire right now and you can scale it up if you want to so i'll just scale it up a bit like that and then from there we're going to go to dead center of the composition and then we're going to go to our blend so you go to the merge and then go to your blend and you merge the blend you're going to take it all the way down here just like that i feel like you can even go to the seventh frame actually so yeah and then take it all the way down like that then go to the end of your comp and then bring it back up then we're going to go into our graphs then from here click into the empty space Control a to highlight the graph Control f to make it bigger and then from there s to smooth it out by the way but i have auto smooth on so it's fine then you're going to make a graph that looks like this a bit like a graph that has a lot of slack something like this then it's going to look like that it's going to come in pretty quick then from there we're going to grab a brightness and contrast node and then hold shift let go of the mouse button and then it's going to be added then grab an ellipse mask mask it go to the brightness and contrast and take the gain down all the way then go back to your ellipse mask invert it and then make the edge soft like that then go to like the seventh frame maybe now let's do like the eighth frame and then from here you want to keyframe all the width and height elements right here and then take it all the way up then go to the end of your comb and then just bring everything in like that once it's done go to your graphs once more and then here we're going to untick our height all right so Control a right click go into ease here then just choose uh out cubic like that same thing for the other one Control a ease and then just choose out cubic as well all right once that's done you have something that looks like this now we're going to go to our timeline and then grab the eyes up here and then just take it all the way up the other one that was on top down then you're going to have something that looks like that as you can see right there all right so next we're going to go into our other adjustment layer and then add a brightness on contrast node again go to the beginning of your comp and just count how many frames until the streaks disappear the trails so maybe right until there go into your composition keyframe gain go to the end and then take the gain all the way down go into your spline panel then we're going to make a graph that starts off really slow and then goes really fast so something like this so something like that all right once that's done and adjusting the graphs a bit you have something that looks like this it's really laggy because it's a really heavy effect as i said before let me just render it out so it looks better all right so here's the clip fully rendered i think that looks really nice actually yeah that's really nice but we can make this look slightly better with some slight transitions all right this is the other clip that i used with a nice slight transition and you have something that looks like that so i'm gonna show you how i did this basically what i did was basically the same thing as before i made the flare then tracked the flare to the eye and then down here the only thing that's making this different is the slide transition so the first thing i did was i took a transform node right here and i used the settings up here so you want to go a frame before you know what let's just remake it so this is what i did to make the slide transition i took my media in node right here then added a transform node and then went to the second last frame right here not the last one but the second last one i got this slide transition idea from cloud then you want to go five or four frames back right there and then go to the end right here second last and then just have it come out just like quite a bit not too much but just a bit 
and then make sure your edges are set to mirror then go up to your spline panel and your spline panel you're going to make this really aggressive graph just like this make sure it doesn't dip down too much all right then from here you're going to add Ikawa easy offset Ikawa's full pack is linked in the description add it to your timeline go to the beginning of your timeline right there and then keyframe down here on the x offset and then go back to the second last frame then bring it back up once that's done you're gonna have something that looks something like this right there and then you want to take the same adjustment layer here where the eye is compound clip it like we did before and then like mask mask it out and make it a freeze frame as we did before and then come up here then put it on top of this so that it acts like a one frame up basically so it's less bright and then becomes bright right there and then here we have a brightness and contrast node or a hot spot if you want using this graph right here and then it slowly reveals the scene connected to the moon up here everything together looks like that all right guys that is the end of the video i want to thank you guys for 1000 subscribers that is absolutely insane i appreciate you guys i love you guys so much and i want to thank you for the uh, like enormous support from the previous video i'll definitely make more videos like that more in depth like i'm probably making like a 50 minute long video for you guys strictly just flow and explain like almost everything that i know also i'll be creating a pay hip soon so i'll be putting some free project files in there and some assets i'll also be making a pay hip with some free project files and some paid project files don't worry i'll be showing how i did most of the projects on my pay hip the project files on my paper just meant for people who are feeling lazy to recreate the stuff but i'll still show you how i made them and yeah thank you guys so much and i'll see you in the next one